Death Valley Days was an anthology series that retold true, albeit heavily dramatized, stories from the American Old West, focusing primarily on those that took place around the Death Valley region of southeastern California. It began as a radio program created by Ruth Woodman in 1930, which ran until 1945. In 52, Death Valley Days made the leap to television, where it was broadcast in syndication until 1970. Throughout its run, it was hosted by several notable people including Dale Robertson and future president Ronald Reagan. Join us as we take a look back on this influential show and the individuals who helmed it while taking the time to pay our respects to these late stars. Stanley Andrews Born August 28, 1891, in Chicago, Illinois, Andrews was best known for voicing Daddy Warbucks on the popular early 20th century radio program Little Orphan Annie. Not much is known of his early years, except that he was raised in the Midwest and, when he was a young adult, developed a love for theater. Early in his acting career, he worked in stock theater, which gave him the confidence to pursue his path in show business. In 1921, he fell in love with and eventually married his wife, Peg. They bought a ranch in Northridge, California, and called it their home for the remainder of their lives. Stanley landed the role of Daddy Warbucks in 1931 and stuck with it until 36. Andrews next appeared in Escape from Devil's Island in 1935, followed by an appearance in Bo Guest in 1939. He went on to appear in over 250 feature films, including Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, State of the Union, and Cry Terror. In 1952, Andrews was cast as The Old Ranger, the host of Death Valley Days. When he landed the role, he put his movie and theater acting career on hold to give the show his full focus. Of all the people to host Death Valley Days, Stanley was arguably the most memorable. The series aired a total of 452 episodes from 1952 to 70. Of those, Andrews was featured in 296. Eventually, however, the sponsor of the program, U.S. Borax, decided they wanted a younger man to be its host. Andrews was replaced by Ronald Reagan in 1963. Andrews died of natural causes in Los Angeles at age 77 on June 23, 1969. Ronald Reagan While many people simply think of him as the 40th president of the U.S., Ronald Reagan was also a fairly successful Hollywood actor in the mid-20th century. He was born February 6, 1911, to an impoverished family in Tampico, Illinois. After graduating from Eureka College, Reagan started working as a radio sports commentator in Iowa. He moved to California in 1937 and found work as an actor and began making appearances in feature films. In 1947, he became the president of the Screen Actors Guild. For the next five years, he used his position of power to root out alleged communists and communist sympathizers in the film industry. In the 60s, Reagan moved on to a career in TV and became a spokesman for GE. In 1964, he was called in to replace Stanley Andrews as host of Death Valley Days, but he ended up leaving the show to focus on his campaign for governor of California. Rumor has it starring on the show actually helped Reagan win that election. Regardless of if that's true, Death Valley Days was the last bit of acting work Reagan ever did. After serving as California's governor from 1967 to 75, Reagan announced in 1979 he'd seek the Republican nomination for the 1980 presidential election. He won both the nomination and election and stayed in office for two terms. When he finally left office in 1989, he held an approval rating of 68%, one of the highest ratings for a departing president in modern times. In 1994, Reagan was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Even though he had planned to be quite active post-presidency, the debilitating effects of the disease made that goal impractical. His public appearances became more rare as the disease progressed. At 93, Reagan died in his home in Los Angeles, June 5, 2004. Since his passing, Reagan has been revered as a conservative political icon. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. And stick around for more of the hosts of Death Valley Days. Rosemary DeCamp Of all the people who hosted Death Valley Days, Rosemary's time presenting the program was the shortest. She took over after Reagan left the series to focus on his political aspirations, but was quickly replaced by Robert Taylor in 1966. DeCamp was born November 14, 1910, in Prescott, Arizona. At age 27, she took the role of Judy Price on the Dr. Christian radio program. In 1939, she was cast in the syndicated soap opera The Career of Alice Blair. 
DeCamp made her film debut in the 1941 drama Cheers for Miss Bishop. With Warner Brothers, she went on to appear in films like Eyes of Night, Rhapsody in Blue, and Jungle Book. In the early 50s, she made appearances in musicals like On Moonlight Bay and By the Light of the Silvery Moon. On television, she appeared in popular 1950s shows like The Life of Riley, Lux Radio Theater, and The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. In 1961, she guest starred on an episode of Rawhide. A year later, she played the character Gertrude Comack on the ABC medical drama Breaking Point. In 1965, she hosted Death Valley Days briefly before doing a series of commercials for the laundry product 20 Mule Team Borax. From 1966 to 70, she played the mother of Marlo Thomas's character on the sitcom That Girl. During that time, she also appeared in a handful of episodes of Petticoat Junction, playing Kate Bradley's sister Helen. From 1970 to 73, DeCamp played Shirley Partridge's mother on The Partridge Family. And in the 80s, she played the fairy godmother on the television series Memoirs of a Fairy Godmother. DeCamp died of pneumonia at 90 on February 20, 2001. Robert Taylor Born Spangler Arlington Brug on the 5th of August 1911 in Philly, Nebraska, Taylor joined his campus's theater after he enrolled in Pomona College in Claremont, California. In 1932, he was noticed by an MGM talent scout and signed to a seven-year contract. The studio then gave him his new stage name. Taylor made his movie debut in the 1934 comedy Handy Andy. The following year, he was given his first leading role in the film Magnificent Obsession. Throughout the 30s and 40s, Taylor's popularity continued to increase as he enjoyed roles in films like Camille, A Yank at Oxford, Waterloo Bridge, and Bataan. After serving as a flight instructor in the U.S. Naval Air Forces during World War II, Taylor transitioned to television work. From 1959 to 62, he starred in the television series The Detectives. In 1966, he was tasked with hosting Death Valley Days after Ronald Reagan had left the program and Rosemary DeCamp briefly filled in. Taylor remained the series' host until his death. In 1968, he had to have a portion of his right lung surgically removed. His doctors assumed he had contracted a disease known as valley fever, but during the surgery, they discovered he had lung cancer. Taylor was a lifelong smoker who smoked three packs a day since he was a kid. He died of lung cancer June 8, 1969 at age 57 in Santa Monica, California. Dale Robertson Born Dale Lemoyne Robertson, July 14, 1923, and best known for his work on television, this actor ended up being the fourth and final host of Death Valley Days from 1968 to 70. Before he became an actor, Robertson fought as a pro boxer. While he was enrolled at the Oklahoma Military Academy, Columbia Pictures offered him a screen test for the lead role in their upcoming film adaptation of Golden Boy. He declined the offer, but after the war, he went out to Hollywood, where he appeared in an uncredited role in the 1948 film The Boy with Green Hair. He went on to appear in several films, including feature roles in 1949's Fighting Man of the Plains and 1959's The Caribou Trail before landing a seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox. He later achieved stardom playing Jim Hardy in the TV series Tales of Wells Fargo and Ben Calhoun in Iron Horse. After hosting Death Valley Days, Robertson remained active, mostly making guest appearances on TV shows until the late 80s. In the last several years before his death, he hosted a radio show called Little Known Facts, which was broadcast across the nation on over 400 channels. Robertson died of lung cancer February 27, 2013, at Scripps Memorial Hospital in La Jolla, California. He was 89. Now it's time to hear from you. Which host of Death Valley Days do you remember most fondly? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.